Construction works have begun on a piece of prime property in the heart of downtown Belize City, right across from the Swing Bridge. When completed, a two-story concrete building with parking space to the rear and various office spaces will serve as a welcome center for tourists and Belizeans alike to gather information about the commercial city and old capital. A space for artisans and other organizations is also conceived. This project is a part of a larger project of the rejuvenation of downtown Belize City, which is coming under the Belize City House of Culture and downtown rejuvenation project. This Paslo site is one of the projects we're working on. Uh, this site is important mainly because of the historical context, which was that it's, it was an old historical colonial architectural building. And um, it's, it's kind of strategic because right across the bridge is where the downtown rejuvenation project will build what we call an eco-museum. Eco Ground Zero, as it has been referred to for the past 15 years, is a landmark. It is where the iconic Paslo building once stood for almost a century. The three-story colonial designed wooden and concrete structure was named after Thomas Paslo, who along with his slaves had fought in the 1798 Battle of St. George's Quay. In 1945, it was acquired by the government and housed the magistrate's courts, the lands and income tax departments of Belize City, as well as the post office. The Paslo building was constructed in around the 1920s um, as a three-story building. It was originally constructed as a three-story building and it was um, built by the Jefferson Construction Company of New Orleans which at around that time was building the Belize Swing Bridge and some other buildings in, the, in Belize City. The building was given the, the, the name Paslo because of the colonial aspect at the time, the colonial governor, I think it was Sir Alan Burns, um, thought of, give, of giving the, the name Paslo, right? The building host originally the, what, what was called the Belize Store, and that existed for about, well, until 1931, when the Belize Estate and Produce Company bought over the, the, the building. And it, it um, Belize Estate um, subsequently sold it to, to, the, to the government of, of Belize to be used as a government the, um, departments, government offices, including the post office, the magistrates' courts, and survey department. But on September 29, 2002, one of the most devastating fires in the nation's history spread through the third floor of the Paslo building, destroying important legal documents and the integrity of the infrastructure in its path. Even as firefighters exhausted its resources to effectively battle the blaze, the damage was irreparable. An investigation revealed the unthinkable. The building was deliberately set on fire. At this present moment, um, Jackie, we don't even know the era of origin much less talking about the cause of the fire. Because you've got to establish an area of origin before you could even consider looking for a cause, an ignition source. So it's sad that for some reason we're hearing supposed cause of the fire on the radio. And we ourselves, the investigator, don't, haven't yet commenced this investigation the way we want yet. Because we were focused, the fire service job initially is to focus, in, focus on out in the fire. That's what we were doing yesterday, out in the fire. When we finish out the fire, then we think about investigate. Three days later, Ivan Ayusa, a second class clerk or cashier with the magistrate's court, was charged for arson. By 2005, the case was reportedly thrown out on a technicality. While the disaster was a major loss to the architecture and created a big gap in the face of downtown Belize City, the value of the loss was so much more. Back then, there was speculation that Minister of Housing Dickie Bradley, who also had the portfolio for the National Fire Service, may have been involved because days before the inferno, he allegedly said that the building should have been burnt down. While he never did, Bradley maintains that the loss was tremendous. In terms of the few historical buildings that Belize City plagued by so many fires in the past and by the destructive hurricanes that have passed through, 
this would be a historic loss. It would have been one of the few three-story buildings of its time. The name of the new building is under review after concerns were expressed by residents and historians. Among those persons are attorney Richard Dickey Bradley, who from before the Paslo building was destroyed by fire, felt that the building should be renamed. Thomas Paslo, who was actually uh, a slave owner, um, and his only claim to fame was that he was a part of the Battle of St. George's Key in 1798. He, he never occupied the land. He never owned the land that Paslo Building stood on. Actually, he lived on the other side of Affalover Creek, where the um, that, um, commercial center is, 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 uh, exists yes, now. But there was another part to the gentleman, which is that he has the notoriety, if I could use those word, that word, that he was taken to court and he was tried by his fellow, mag they were called magistrates in, in, the, in, the, in those days. He was tried and found guilty, convicted and charged a fine, and I put a white man in jail, for mutilating some of his slaves. He was a slave owner to start with. So, um I, I would hope that they wouldn't include the name Paslo in this new building. <laughs> Bradley has further concerns about the purpose of the building when completed. How come they're going to put BTB will have some foolishness there when they should really build back that building and leave the bottom as a parking area? It's another, it's another erase, erasing of our history and our culture. No? The original Paslo building um, was colonial architectural, was a colonial architectural design building. And um, it was important for us since our project is about the history and culture of downtown Belize City. And if we are going to replace one of the buildings, an old historic building, we wanted to put something there was as, as close as possible to the architectural design of that building and of, of the era of that building. The contractor is Eric Martinez and Sons. The project started about a month ago and is expected to be completed by early 2020. Dwayne Moody for News 5.